um, what was their reasoning? Why did they decide to go back? Well, they, be, because of because of the cancer argument. But you would have thought that you know that there's there's certain rules around screening, mm. what a good screening program is and things, and what the benefits and disbenefits are. Mm. Clearly, they will have decided that the benefits of going back to a twenty year old is greater mm. than not doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't just suddenly switch on a program because there's a massive cost implication. Yeah. For doing that, so what's their, they must have had reasons for it. Well, the, they've used the argument of of missing an under twenty five year old mm. with cancer, and I, I know having been to this year's uh, British Society of Colposcopy conference, which um, they actually held in Dublin, which was particularly <laughs> irritating, <laughs> and certainly the flight back from Dublin um, on on the uh, on the Friday night, we reckoned that if that plane had went down, there was no one who could do colposcopy in the northwest of England because <laughs> the flight to Manchester was basically the the. Um, Ryanair flight was filled with colposcopists, um, but <laughs> um, certainly it was debated at that conference. And the British Society of Colposcopy have advocated keeping it at twenty-five, but the NHS Scotland and the NHS Wales have obviously decided to go their own way on that. Now, so it is a difficult argument. Would the vaccine actually help in these? Yes. Um, very aggressive cancers, or are they just a different form of the HPV. I, I think there's a small there's there's a small number where it would help, and I think maybe if uh, if a girl has been exposed to <coughs> HPV at the age of becomes sexually active at the age of twelve, and is is instantly uh, comes in contact with HPV sixteen and eighteen, then there is a chance that they would go through that whole process but before the age of 25 and therefore they would be helped by the vaccine. Um, but I think some of these under 25s have what we call neuroendocrine tumours which are not HPV related right. and um, <laughs> I'm feeling very uneasy. Um, and um, so therefore they wouldn't be picked up mm. by and i think we need to get away from calling i i know that we've tried to call it, we're trying to call them cervical cytology screening and mm. certainly the uh, british society of colposcopy have said try to get away from calling them smears because of course the reason they're called smears is because we used to smear the brush or the spatula onto a slide we don't do that anymore um, so there's no smearing involved, so why call them smears? Um, and also, they've been sort of labelled uh, as cancer smears, and of course, if you think someone's got cervical cancer, the last test you should ever do is a smear, because mm. a smear is actually quite a poor way of diagnosing cervical cancer. If I mean, I would always advise if, if a doctor or anybody thinks someone's got cervical cancer, they should be referred urgently for my or, or one of my colleagues' uh, advice rather than take a smear. Because I have seen uh, a couple of cases of people with cervical cancer and unfortunately the doctors who had seen them prior to me had been falsely reassured with negative smears mm. and it's not uncommon to get a negative smear in the presence of cervical cancer because once you've got cancer the um, the cervix often bleeds when you take the smear that interferes with the cells and, and it, it, it really isn't a good test so so if someone goes if a 25 year old or any age goes uh, with symptoms that suggest cervical cancer and when the doctor looks at the cervix thinks it could be cervical cancer then they need to be referred for colposcopy. Taking a smear isn't going to um, isn't going to diagnose or refute that. If you have external genital warts, like ones you can see on your skin, does that mean you're more likely to get cancer in the neck of your womb? Most 
genital warts are caused by different HPV. So the type of HPV that causes genital warts is different to the 16 and 18 that cause uh, cervical cancer. However, if someone's got genital warts, then it's possible they've also got HPV 16 and 18. What I'd advise any woman who's got external genital warts is to get them treated and to have her smears when she's asked to attend for her smears. Do you think boys should be having the HPV vaccine? Um, HPV vaccine, interesting. H I feel I've been grilled now. HPV vaccine. Um, if, if, I mean, they're, they're starting off with 12 year old uh, and, and beyond girls um, on the basis that if, if your uptake is enough. So I think if, if it's above 85% of that group have the vaccine, um, then the amount of HPV in the population, so the HPV pull reduces. And if the HPV pull reduces, then um, boys don't really need to be vaccinated because boys are the carriers essentially Six, HPV 16 and 18 uh, do, doesn't affect boys doesn't cause anything in boys they just pass it on to girls um, and then that causes their survival problem um, so but if Less than 85% um, of girls have it, then you've got enough floating around in the population, which creates an argument that if you vaccinate 85, if you work on the basis that 85% of, if 85% of girls approximately would have it, and 85% of boys have it, then the HPV pull drops and therefore less girls will be getting it from boys. So, um, however, um, the type of vaccine that we've got is only 16 and 18, but there are other ones out on the market that uh, work for uh, the HPV subtypes, which I can't remember off the top of my head because it's not a coposcopic um, uh, <laughs> HPV, but basically the ones that cause <coughs> what warts. Um, if if you vaccinate boys, um, there'll be a small number of boys and girls who won't be heterosexual, and therefore. Um, Genital warts in boys is hi higher incidence of genital warts in, in the homosexual population and therefore you may reduce the incidence of that in the homosexual population. So there is an argument for giving a different <coughs> vaccine to, to boys. Um, and in fact there is research ongoing to produce one that's, that works for six and for eight different HPV subtypes.